I see there are some folks joining in. Uh, we'll just give it another minute and uh, get started. Uh, hope everyone's having a you know a fresh start. Uh, and uh, the earlier sessions were really uh, interesting uh, in terms of uh, API uh, management and API driven tools and uh, everything else that has been discussed. So uh, for this particular workshop, uh, we'll focus a little bit more on uh, even driven APIs and even driven architecture and see. Uh, you know, how we can build them uh, using uh, Confluent. All right, so maybe we can get started. Um, so the whole idea of uh, event-driven APIs uh, is to kind of set uh, the baseline as to you know what uh, is event-driven API and how it is different from uh, a traditional uh, you know request response kind of a model where we are familiar with uh, with APIs. So typically. Uh, we would send in requests, receive uh, the responses, and then we would uh, use that from within our uh, service or application. Uh, we'll slightly you know, shift that model into uh, something that's more real-time and kind of context-driven. Uh, and we look at you know, how uh, event-driven architectures are uh, enabling a lot of applications to be built in real-time where you can take uh, proactive uh, business decisions as well. All right, so just an introduction again for those of you who have joined. Uh, I'm part of Confluent uh, you know, Solutions Engineering team. Uh, my, my name is Naveen, and uh, I've been with the company for about uh, two years plus now. And what uh, is really exciting is about uh, the whole paradigm shift in the way that applications are being built, uh, not just in uh, internet companies, but also uh, traditional enterprises where uh, you know there's a lot of uh, shift towards modern application development, and we'll see you know how Confluent kind of fits in the uh, you know central nervous system of the whole uh, whole landscape. Right. All right. So the workshop is all about building even driven APIs. So we'll go through uh, pretty much uh, you know an understanding of you know uh, what even driven APIs is. So what's my view of uh, uh, even driven APIs, and what's uh, you know something that we, you know that we can all establish together as an understanding of even driven API before we proceed. And what I'll go through with this session is uh, take a specific um, you know use case uh, and kind of uh, see how we can model that uh, using even driven APIs uh, to be consumed from uh, real time applications. So what exactly is uh, even driven APIs, right? So. The best way to you know define uh, even driven API is to kind of compare it with uh, what we know as APIs, right? So uh, traditional APIs are primarily you know constructed in the RESTful way. So you have a server uh, to which an application would send a request and you would get a response back, and that would be used from within the application. So the RESTful way of you know querying APIs has been something which is uh, quite popular for uh, the longest uh, time uh, with internet applications. And what's changing is uh, the way in which uh, you know, applications expect uh, data uh, from the uh, server side. So primarily the uh, reason why this is uh, you know, kind of uh, moving towards this uh, kind of a flow is because uh, server-driven events are something which uh, we want uh, to push towards applications rather than applications querying in for uh, data points uh, from the server. Now, the whole idea of uh, event-driven uh, APIs or streaming APIs is that uh, a particular event occurs within you know some part of your uh, application stack or you know within your uh, entire architecture landscape, and you want that uh, particular event to be captured in a central layer and uh, you know, propagate that to downstream systems like an application which is used by a consumer or a user. Or it could be the case where uh, you want a downstream system to pick it up and uh, act upon it uh, for uh, business processes as well. Okay. So the whole idea of uh, even driven APIs or streaming APIs is to be able to capture events uh, in real time and act upon it uh, and you know, push that towards uh, you know, systems that need that uh, data rather than uh, the systems or the applications querying for the data uh, when they need it, right? So this is uh, kind of shifting the whole model of uh, building applications where the applications are listening to 
uh, updates from the server as compared to uh, requesting uh, you know, for a response from the server. So that's uh, a pretty you know, simple comparison of you know, how uh, I would differentiate uh, between uh, you know, traditional REST APIs and uh, streaming APIs. Uh, here, I think the primary uh, you know, keywords that we need to take away is uh, the pull-based approach in the traditional me mechanism. And we have like a push-based approach uh, in the uh, streaming API or the event-driven world. Now, what really you know led to the whole uh, evolution of uh, event-driven systems and uh, uh, streaming APIs and so on is primarily how uh, internet systems were being built and how that's changed over a period of time. So, uh, HTTP pipelining is something that has uh, you know been there for you know quite some time. Where you have typically uh, in traditional applications or web applications, you typically have a client that will open a session to the server. Uh, it will probably authenticate uh, with the server. The server will authorize the client. Uh, the client will send in a request via payload. Uh, the payload uh, is handled by the server. Uh, some processing is done on the server side, and uh, response is kind of uh, encapsulated together, and that's uh, you know uh, forwarded back to the uh, client. So that would be a traditional flow where you know we don't have this. Uh, by planning in place, so it would be very much synchronous. So you wait for one step uh, to complete, and uh, you know, followed by the uh, next step. Uh, in terms of uh, HTTP pipelining, uh, what really you know advanced the whole uh, way in which uh, you know communication could be done from applications to the server side is that a lot of uh, these events or uh, you know, uh, actions that need to be taken by the server could be. Uh, asynchronous calls from the client. So the client could send in an uh, asynchronous call to you know, authenticate with the server or open the session with the server. At the same time, it could also send another request to the server uh, saying that you know, this is my payload uh, and you can process it once you know, the session is established and the uh, you know, server has authenticated uh, the client. So the client, <clears throat> the client necessarily is not uh, blocked by the uh, server in terms of what the server is processing, uh, the client can simply uh, act upon uh, uh, you know whatever it needs to do by just forwarding it to the server. The server will act upon it whenever the server uh, is available to do so, and the response will be forwarded back to the client. So essentially, what's changed in uh, with the introduction of HTTP pipelining is that you don't have blocking or synchronous calls to. Uh, between the client to server, uh, limiting uh, the way you design your applications. Now, uh, there's a lot of uh, you know research and development gone around this whole concept. So I think uh, one of the key uh, uh, you know developments was uh, started off by uh, the Google team, where they were looking at uh, protocols like Speedy, uh, and then over a period of time, it was kind of standardized uh, into HTTP pipelines. Uh, and that's uh, you know a lot of tremendous work which has been done in this particular area. So, with that understanding of uh, you know even driven APIs and you know streaming APIs and how uh, modern internet applications or digital applications can um, be developed and uh, redesigned and the whole way in which we can uh, you know do a lot of things asynchronously is. Uh, you know the basis for our uh, remaining workshop, and we'll discuss as to you know how we can use uh, Confluent in order to be able to build uh, this uh, you know sort of an architecture or design. All right, so I'll go through uh, a specific uh, you know use case or an example of building customer three hundred and sixty uh, you know databases. So <clears throat> customer three hundred and sixty systems are. Uh, primarily built uh, by sourcing information from various different siloed uh, systems or databases across the organization. And essentially what we need is a <clears throat> method in which we can stitch together all of that information uh, to reflect uh, the customer information in real time. So any changes that is being made uh, to the customer information, say maybe uh, you know, to the profile information, so maybe you know, some transactions that the customer uh, has had with you know some parts of the business, uh, or if there is some interactions through a specific third-party channel that the customer has had um, and that's been captured maybe through a marketing system, uh, all of that needs to be uh, integrated together to have a single uh, view of the customer. 
so for that, uh, traditionally what uh, you know, what was uh, being done is uh, you would typically do what is like an ETL process. So you would have uh, batch-based systems where you uh, get the data from the source systems, you would uh, upload it uh, or transform it using uh, ETL uh, tool, and then you would, uh, you know, probably you know load that into a data warehouse or so where it can be consumed um, eventually. Uh, now, what's changing is that uh, a lot of these uh, information about the customer, which needs to be captured, is uh, also being updated in real time. So the customer could interact with various digital channels that a uh, particular business has. So <clears throat> that needs to be updated uh, and reflected in the customer 360 view in real time. Uh, and uh, you know, traditional approach of having a batch-based ETL is not something that would um, be quite effective in designing uh, real-time applications. So for this particular workshop, I'll go through uh, this customer 360 example, and we'll see as to you know what are some of the components as part of Confluent uh, that you can use in order to be able to build uh, such a system. Right. So as part of the Confluent uh, you know, platform, we have uh, you know KSQL DB, which is a streaming uh, engine, uh, which will allow you to uh, process a data which is coming into the platform in real time. And along with it, we have what is called as connectors, which will allow you to integrate with a uh, you know, variety of source and target system. So typically, if you want to source information from, say, for example, customer master data, which is sitting in, in SQL Server, uh, or if you have uh, you know, transactional information, which is sitting in, in uh, Oracle database, uh, you might have uh, other uh, you know CRM uh, systems like Salesforce and so on, where you would want to source some information from. Uh, all of this, uh, you know, we have uh, connectors for, and that's something which you can use in order to source and bring in uh, information into the Confluent uh, system. So once the data enters uh, Confluent, uh, the next step is in order to generate a real-time customer 360 uh, view. Uh, we'll have to stitch together all of these sources of information into a single uh, you know, kind of golden record uh, for the customer. So in order to build that customer 360 view, it takes not just uh, you know, gathering information from multiple sources, but also we need to have some sort of a logic uh, which allows the data to be processed uh, in real time. So one is to be able to stitch together this information uh, across these different systems for which we can use uh, you know, SQL like joins, uh, so join statements, uh, which will allow uh, us to join uh, data from, say, like a SQL server source with the Oracle, uh, you know, source and so on. Um, so once we stitch together that information from different sources, then we probably want to apply uh, some sort of uh, logic in terms of uh, computing that customer 360 view. So we don't necessarily want to have all the attributes of the customer. Uh, the way it is, uh, we probably want to aggregate some of that information. Like, for example, if uh, a customer makes uh, you know a number of transactions with the uh, you know backend system, uh, we'd want to you know probably summarize that uh, you know set of transactions. So maybe you know uh, summarize uh, if it's payment transactions, if we want to summarize the you know total amount. Of uh, you know, uh, payments made uh, by that customer. Uh, if it is, uh, you know, uh, interactions that the customer has had with, uh, say, maybe a mobile uh, application or an online portal, probably there is clickstream information that we want to capture, and we want to aggregate this um, so that we get a holistic view of the customer. So aggregation is quite important when it comes to applying uh, some sort of a logic uh, on top of uh, joining data from multiple sources uh, in order to build uh, customer 360. So, <clears throat> yeah, so the flow in which we would build a customer 360 using KSQL DB, uh, and KSQL DB will allow us to do this with pretty much uh, expressing some of this logic as SQL statements. Uh, so, if you're familiar with uh, database uh, SQL, uh, it would be similar kind of uh, you know statements that you would write. Uh, and uh, additionally, what you do is create objects, which are called as a stream and uh, a table. Uh, we'll see a little more in detail as to you know, what these mean uh, when we go about uh, you know, building uh, the rest of the workshop. But essentially, we'll try to understand here what the flow would look like. So the data is captured using the connectors. 
um, and uh, we would kind of capture them in different objects, uh, like customer object and the transactions object. So we create what is called a streams out of them. And then we would join uh, the uh, streams across uh, each other. So we join the customer stream and transaction stream, probably you know using a customer ID, which is common amongst them. And we would aggregate uh, the uh, other information like uh, payments or you know balance information or the number of uh, interactions that the customer has had and so on, uh, and move that over to a customer uh, 360 view. So uh, what really happens here is that we kind of define all of this logic upfront and submit that to the KSQL DB engine. Uh, and uh, it's going to, as the data flows through uh, these systems, uh, anytime there's an update being made on the source systems, it would flow through all of this uh, processing pipeline and it would update the materialized uh, customer 360 view. So it's slightly different from how we would, you know, uh, build customer 360 systems before. So before we bring all of that data uh, using ETL into a data warehouse, and then we query against that data warehouse. So here it's different where we write the queries up front and decide you know, what the processing flow would look like, submit that to the KSQL DB engine, and the processing is running continuously. And as the data flows through the uh, Kafka topics, it would update uh, the, uh, it would flow through the processing pipeline and update the materialized uh, customer 360 view as well. Okay, so that's uh, how we would go about building the whole you know, customer 360 uh, view. Uh, now, the other aspect is, you know, how do we use that information from within an application? So that's where the whole streaming APIs concept comes in. So KSQL DB allows us to query data uh, in two different ways. So one is we can issue, uh, you know, traditional type of queries where we are sending in a request, uh, you know, the query gets executed, we want to get the response back, and we fit that uh, result set into the application. So that's something which the uh, KSQL DB engine will allow us uh, by issuing a, a, you know, a, a pull request to an uh, API. The other is that we would probably you know, want to update uh, you know, some of this customer information to the uh, application uh, without the application having to query. So that's why the whole streaming API uh, comes into the picture. And the application can uh, basically query uh, the KSQL DB uh, uh, in a customer 360 view uh, by issuing a streaming API call. And then anytime there's an update to the customer 360 view, it would generate an event and push that into the uh, customer 360 uh, uh, sorry, into the uh, application straight away. So the application doesn't necessarily need to keep querying uh, the customer 360 view in KSQL DB. Rather, uh, KSQL DB would push uh, any changes or any new events to the application and reflect that over there. All right, so that's, uh, you know, what we'll be going through in this whole uh, workshop. Uh, so just kind of breaking it down uh, into some visuals before we, you know, uh, get uh, on with the whole workshop uh, as to you know how we're going to build that. Uh, so uh, from the source tables, uh, essentially that would be since it's SQL Server and Oracle, uh, it would be you know tables with you know defined data types for the columns and so on, uh, and we can use connectors to bring that information uh, into uh, Kafka topics. So uh, the customer master. Uh, uh, or the customer profile uh, could contain you know, multiple objects. So you have customer master, address master, phone master. And essentially what we want to do is use uh, you know, information from uh, all these different tables to stitch uh, together what's called as a customer profile. Uh, and eventually where we want to get to is uh, the other, uh, so joining all of these different tables from these different systems together uh, and kind of stitching it together as the materialized uh, customer 360 view. So as you can note, note here, we not only capture the customer uh, profile information, uh, but we also aggregate some of the transactional information and join all of that together in order to uh, generate the customer 360 view. So say for example, customer ID, first name, last name, date of birth, uh, address pin, address type, uh, phone number, phone type, all of these is information that comes in from the SQL Server or the customer master data uh, tables. And the rest of it is from the Oracle database where the transaction information where 
uh, it's an aggregate of the number of uh, transactions, uh, the transaction amount. So that's again an aggregate function where you uh, sum uh, all the uh, you know uh, transaction amounts, uh, and again probably use a rules uh, checking uh, you know what transaction type it was. If it was a credit, then you want to add that. If it was a debit, you want to deduct that, and then you want to reflect that as a latest uh, balance. Right. So. Those are you know things that you can kind of uh, build together with uh, KSQL DB. All right, so uh, I think I went through as to you know what uh, we're doing with the whole flow. So I'm just kind of breaking it down into the steps as to you know how we execute that uh, within the KSQL DB flow. So you source the data, uh, we build what is called as the pipeline. So as you can see here, the pipeline starts from. Uh, sourcing that information. So we have the transaction stream, we have the account stream, uh, we create uh, different objects from it. So like I said, in KSQL DB, we have two kinds of objects. So one is stream and the other is table. So a stream object is typically uh, you know, something that will allow us to track any updates being made to the underlying source system. So any uh, update, uh, delete, insert, uh, any of the DML changes uh, on the table would propagate as an event into the uh, stream. The second aspect would be the uh, uh, the second type of object would be a table. So a table is something that can uh, hold uh, you know information and persist it over a period of time. So uh, if you send a new message uh, with the same uh, key uh, and a different value, it would simply update that particular message. So the difference between stream and table again here would be that stream uh, sees the events in a continuous flowing fashion. And uh, they are a series of immutable uh, you know, set of events. So which means that every new event is something which would be created as a new message and stored as part of the stream. In the case of a table, an update is possible. So uh, it would persist the information. If a message with the same key and a new value is sent, it would update uh, that into within the table. Right. So, once that particular pipeline is built, uh, like I said, uh, you know, here the pipeline is built first, and the data flows through the pipeline, as opposed to, um, you know, doing it the other way around, where we source all the information, collect it in one place, and then uh, we query the uh, data uh, uh, from the uh, place where it is collected from. So here, the logic is kind of defined first. Uh, the processing pipeline is executing continuously, and as and when there are new events from the source systems, it won't capture them and propagate it to the customer 360 view, uh, which is a uh, KSQL DB table. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so once the whole pipeline is established and we start seeing data flowing through, uh, essentially what we're going to see is how do we differentiate uh, two kinds of queries. So one is a pull query where we are issuing a query to the KSQL DB engine. Uh, we will get the response back and we will use the result set and fit it back into the uh, application. The second is a push query where we are, uh, again, establishing a session uh, to the uh, KSQL DB engine. Uh, say that you know this is uh, you know the set of uh, you know, the customer 360 view that we want uh, to hear updates from, and for any new event which is updating the customer 360 view, uh, it would just propagate it as an event into the uh, application, uh, which is uh, establish that uh, API session with the uh, KSQL DB engine. So that's the difference between a pull and a push query. Uh, we look at you know how we can uh, query this uh, via an API uh, endpoint. Uh, so like I said, for pull queries, we would submit the query to the KSQL DB server. We get the response back, and we fit that into the application. In the case of a push query, uh, we would again post whatever needs to be queried. Uh, so we say that I want to select any changes that happens on the customer 360 view. And uh, basically, when we hit that, the application will wait for uh, events from the server. So that's the primary difference between like a RESTful, uh, you know, pull query based approach within KSQL DB and uh, the streaming uh, approach, uh, which is uh, letting KSQL DB server push uh, updates or new events into the customer 360 view. Okay. All right. So. Uh, yeah, the whole code in the pipeline, and if that's something which you would be interested in to try it out later on, uh, would be uh, available from uh, my GitHub. Uh, and 
you can find these uh, series, uh, sorry, customer 360, uh, you know, case equal DB uh, project in there, and then you can uh, use uh, the Docker Compose to run that, and you would be able to, you know, get this whole pipeline up and running. Um, so maybe we can quickly look at, you know, how this pipeline can be executed, and that's something which, uh, you know, participants before have, uh, you know, run through uh, in order to understand, you know, what's happening uh, with the whole pipeline. All right, so let me quickly bring up the uh, services. So so essentially, what's happening here is if you go into the uh, GitHub and you know get that particular project, uh, it will run. Uh, and start up uh, with these scripts. Uh, I pass in the parameters Oracle and SQL Server, just letting uh, the system know that these are the connectors uh, to provision, and these are my source systems. So the connectors will provision uh, accordingly, uh, read it from the source systems, and publish that into the uh, Confluent uh, topics. So once that <clears throat> data is published into the Confluent topics, uh, what? so maybe just a step before that, So once I provide that information saying that my source systems are Oracle and SQL Server, and once everything is up and running, uh, the system uh, will allow you to create connectors. So we use what is called as an Oracle uh, you know, CDC source connector, which will allow you to capture information from the source system. Uh, and then you have a SQL Server Debezium source connector, which will allow you to, again, capture information from the SQL Server tables and propagate that into a confluent uh, topic. So you define, you know, where um, the uh, data needs to go to uh, with the bootstrap servers, and say that uh, you know capture uh, all the information from uh, the underlying uh, SQL Server uh, database uh, in the specific schema and propagate that into the confluent topics. So this is how we create connectors. So I wouldn't get into uh, details of that, but essentially we also expose a REST endpoint in order to uh, create the connectors. Uh, you know, uh, uh, by you know passing on the connector configuration as a JSON, uh, like you can see, we are basically you know uh, posting that config uh, at this particular endpoint, and it would uh, <clears throat> create the connector as a process within what's called as a connect worker, uh, and it would start uh, you know sourcing that information from the uh, databases, right? Um, yeah, so once these connectors are created, uh, essentially what we're getting is data into the uh, Confluent topics. So probably just check if we have that almost running. Uh, not yet, but we can, in the meantime, just check what happens in the next step. So this is how we would define uh, KSQL. So essentially what KSQL uh, looks like is pretty much like uh, SQL syntax, uh, except for the fact that we have different kinds of objects uh, called a stream and <clears throat> uh, table. Uh, so those are the different objects that you can create within uh, KSQL DB. <clears throat> and as you can see, the whole processing logic is something which we kind of build up front and submit to the uh, server. So say, for example, I create a stream from the uh, account, uh, you know, uh, stream uh, topic. Uh, so the underlying Kafka topic is what the source uh, looks at. So this is where my uh, uh, connectors were published, uh, the events or the changes into. Um, and uh, what I'm doing is listening to that particular topic for any new events which uh, propagate from my uh, account or my transaction stream. Right? So that's something which uh, we can uh, build through SQL syntax. So. Like here, I'm just doing a little bit of uh, you know uh, data transformations in order to you know stitch that uh, information together, and once I kind of put that together, uh, it would create that object, and I can use that object as my uh, subsequent step in uh, processing. <clears throat> so, for example, here uh, I'm kind of doing a join when I just come a little further down. So here I'm joining across all the uh, customer profile information. Uh, so that's from the phone stream, the address stream, and the uh, account master stream. 
uh, and basically you know uh, joining all of that over the customer id uh, so that uh, i can build up what is called as a customer 360 view so once i join all that information i apply uh, some sort of uh, logic uh, in terms of uh, the aggregates that i need so say for example for uh, the balance i can just sum all the transaction amounts um, and i can have all of that being persisted into what is called as a materialized customer 360 view in case equal db so that would be pretty much the flow as to you know how we can put uh, all of that together and once we have that up and uh, running let's see if my services are running it's almost there so it's just creating the connectors to oracle it's creating the connectors to <clears throat> sql server uh, sourcing that information and in a moment it's going to start building up the uh, ksql db uh, views that we just uh, saw as well so let me quickly see if I can bring up what's called as the control center. So this is like a browser-based tool where you can see if some of that information is being reflected. Yep. Yeah, so from the Oracle DB, we see that you know there is a transaction information which is being captured. Uh, there is, uh, yeah, these are the profile information of that customer, which comes in via the SQL server and the connector from there. Uh, <clears throat> and what we can do is go into KSQL DB and see what's called as a KSQL DB uh, flow. So I think that's still being built, yeah. And this is pretty much a view of our whole processing pipeline. So we see that, you know, these are the different objects uh, that we are kind of joining uh, together uh, in order to build uh, the customer 360 view. Right? Okay, so let's see if all that has gone through fine. It's uh, building up the uh, KSQL DB, uh, you know, processing pipeline. And maybe I just come back here. And we can see, you know, what are those, uh, you know, the set of streams and tables which are being, uh, you know, propagated. So we see that the customer 360 view has already been uh, created. It's going through fine. And in terms of the flow, uh, we see that the whole pipeline is established and it goes all the way to the customer 360 view. So that would be, uh, yeah, pretty much how we build uh, the whole customer 360 view. Uh, the next step would be if I have an application that needs to query that customer 360 view, uh, how do I go about doing that via uh, making API requests? So if I just come back into the scripts over here. So like I said, one is the uh, traditional approach where we are making a RESTful query. So submit a particular query to the uh, KSQL DB server. Uh, and expecting a response uh, which can be plugged in into the application. So that's the you know first uh, you know set of query which is being executed. So here you can see that the pull query is being issued. I get the response back as again a JSON array, and that can be you know plugged in into the application straight away. Uh, the second is the push query. So here I've issued the query like you can see. It is still listening for uh, events uh, from the uh, source side. So any changes being made on the source side uh, would pretty much be reflected uh, on the uh, customer 360 view, and that would generate a new event over here. So maybe we can just quickly look at that. Uh, maybe I just update one of uh, the customer profile information, like a phone number for the customer. Let's see if that gets through the system. Yeah, and we can see that it has propagated in almost real time. So as soon as we make the change on the source database, which is SQL Server, it propagates through the whole pipeline, uh, you know, recomputes that 
uh, customer 360 and updates it uh, and pushes an event into the application side, which is uh, you know, uh, connected to the KC Kubernetes DB server uh, via a streaming API. So this is how streaming APIs are different as compared to RESTful APIs. So every time there's a particular event, we want that to propagate to the application and the application doesn't necessarily query it uh, constantly. So it just listens if the server has new events and it would just update that uh, accordingly. All right, so that's pretty much what I wanted to share uh, in terms of the whole uh, workshop today. And um, let me just see if, uh, yeah, if uh, you're interested in, you know, kind of checking out, uh, you know, how to build this whole, uh, you know, streaming API, uh, API pipeline and uh, the whole KSQL DB flow, uh, feel free to, you know, uh, just uh, grab the code from GitHub and uh, put it together. And in case if you're uh, interested in uh, a different use case and you think that kind of uh, makes sense uh, to, uh, you know, uh, work on um, based on this uh, base project, just feel free to, uh, you know, submit a pull request and, uh, yeah, we'll collaborate on the uh, GitHub repo. So that's my time. And that was uh, confluent and uh, building uh, event-driven APIs uh, from uh, Naveen. Thank you, and I'll just be open to questions for the next couple of minutes. If you have any, uh, and if there's a way for you to uh, unmute and ask, uh, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, uh, I just look for any questions on the chat and. See if that's something which we need to attend. All right, so if no specific questions, uh, thanks to everyone who made time to uh, join the session. Uh, and uh, uh, if uh, there's anything that you would like to uh, reach out in terms of the content or the uh, GitHub repo or the uh, slides and so on, please feel free to reach out to the uh, organizers and uh, they'll be able to uh, you know, uh, synchronize and uh, get this for you. Uh, if uh, nothing else, uh, enjoy uh, the rest of the conference and we uh, wish you all a great uh, day ahead. Thank you.